The Lord be with you. Welcome to this worship service on Christmas Eve. We're so glad to have you with us and participating. I do want to invite you, if you've not gathered candles yet, to press pause and gather some candles in your midst so that when we get to the end of this service, we can all light our candles off the Christ candle in our respective Advent wreaths and sing together Silent Night, a tradition that we have done for countless years here at First Presbyterian Worcester. The Christmas Eve service has come to you in two optional broadcasts, two, uh, I don't want to say optional because I want you to watch them both. The first one is a standalone uh, presentation of music by some of our most gifted musicians. And then the second standalone is the service of lessons and carols. So they all have uh, begun broadcast first thing this morning on Christmas Eve. If you haven't caught them yet, uh, caught the music yet, know that you can, but it will be ongoing, available to tune into for uh, weeks and months to come. So uh, let me say to each and every one of you, Merry Christmas, and God bless. This year we dreamed of world peace. We dreamed of deep breaths and restful sleep. We dreamed of love that lasts and suffering that passes. We dreamed of doors open wide and a cure to disease. We dreamed because to dream is to believe. For to dream is to hope. To dream is to see. So make room in your being to dream yet again of a world without fear and a God that draws near. For it is almost Christmas, and love is here. Tonight, we are those who dream. Tonight, we dream the same dreams of our ancestors before us. Tonight, we dream of justice and mercy, of love and kindness, of peace and hope. Tonight, we dream of a God that draws near to us out of unfailing love. May this candle be a reminder that there will be a day when every dream will be fulfilled. And until then, we will be those who dream. Let us worship Holy God.
please pray with us our prayer of reflection. Ever-present God, from time to time we dream radical dreams. We dream of freedom for the imprisoned, food for the hungry, and equality for all. We dream bold, radical dreams until the world tells us that these dreams are impossible. And when that happens, we are tempted to tuck our dreams into coat pockets and to let them collect dust on the shelves of our hearts. Forgive us for giving up so easily, for on this night we remember and celebrate a radical dream that you might dwell among us. Give us the courage to dust off old dreams off the shelf with the confidence that with you, the impossible is possible. With you, a light always shines in the darkness. With you, even an unwed teenage couple and a band of shepherds can bring joy to the world. Thanks be to God for a dream like that. Amen. Now please turn to the others around you and offer them a gesture of peace. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. The reading will be from the first book in Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that everything he had made, and indeed, it was very good.
The second reading is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Isaiah 11, 1 through 3a and 6 through 9. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. The wolf shall live with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Micah 6, 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, 
the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Yeah. Micah 6, 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. The fifth lesson, Luke chapter 1, 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your room and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is, her, is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. A reading from Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, 
He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to his ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. lesson, Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. The scripture is from Luke Chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there were with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. They went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them.
saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. As we come to the close of our worship service together this evening, Christmas Eve 2020, I invite you to take the candles that you have prepared and pass them around your circle. And then take the candle and light from the Christ candle and pass it around your circle as we begin to sing 
silent night. When the Christ is born, we will be near. We will cherish this fragile life in faith. We will commit our lives to the opening of the doors of the world for the coming of love. We will be those who kneel by the manger and carry peace to the people. 
For these are the gifts that the Christ waits to receive. Thanks be to God for the coming of Christmas Day. Amen.